Okay, well, welcome everyone to the first of our Zoe office hours plan to focus on Zoe V3 for Zoe users. We sometimes refer to Zoe users as consumers versus extenders. Uh, I'm Rose Catch, Zoe onboarding squad lead. I'll be kicking off the session. Uh, Jakob will be taking it from there. Uh, but just a couple of high level um, points I want to make before I turn it over to Jakob. Uh, if you are a Zoe extender and you missed the office hours series focused on extenders, please go ahead and visit zoe.org slash v3. You'll find the recordings for that series on that page. Uh, this office hours series will focus on uh, each of the specific Zoe components to ensure that we offer all Zoe consumers, meaning you know folks who install, administer, use, et cetera, um, a, a deeper understanding of uh, what's happening with V3. Um, so each week, a Zoe community lead will feature a Zoe core component and review information related to Zoe V3. Uh, the target delivery date for V3 is March 28th. So what we're going to do is we'll cover all uh, LTS components. Uh, and uh, today, the first uh, component we're going to focus in on, we have highlighted here, and that's the API mediation layer. But we'll be running them every Friday, same time, uh, same LFX Zoom meeting link. And as we state here, if uh, obviously you're all in, so either you, you joined the Linux Foundation or joined as a guest. But you see we have many planned and we'll continue on through February 16th, where we'll hold just an open office hours to answer any remaining questions and concerns. Okay, can you advance? Okay, so um, what we'll cover today, and this, this same agenda will apply to all of the components. Uh, we'll start with a general timeline of what's happening with V1, V2, V3 to give you all some information on uh, when, for example, V1 ends support. Uh, we'll give you an overview of what's coming in V3, high, very high level general overview and then we're going to focus in on the component of the week. And this week, it's the API mediation layer. So we'll talk installation configuration changes, any impact to the user experience with respect to any, you know, any UI components. Um, Jakob will dive deeper into any of the new features. Uh, and then we'll finish up with some resources, contact information, and, and we'll open it up for Q&A. But please feel free as we move on to enter any questions in the chat, and, and we'll try to address them as we go. If not, what we'll do is we, we post frequently asked questions at the same site, the zoe.org slash vnext. Uh, so have a look there if we were not able to answer your call during uh, the time today. OK, um, do you want me to cover this one too, Jakob? Feel free to do so. OK. So um, as far as the releases go, we wanted to bring to your attention a couple of important dates. So as I mentioned, the V3 release date is scheduled for, um, I have April 28th, but it's March 28th. It's March 28th, yeah. Yes, that, that's a, we'll have to make that fix. It's March 28th, so it should be 3 28 2024. Um, the end of support date for V1 is is scheduled for and will happen at the end of September of this year. So the clock is ticking less than nine months away for the V1 termination of support. Uh, if you're on V1, we encourage you to make plans to start migrating either to V2 or plan to go to V3. Uh, the V2 end of support date is quite a ways out, so you have a long runway there if you prefer to go to V2. Um, we're looking at... Um, End, end of August of 2026. If you're curious about whether or not any of your extensions are going to be uh, compatible, um, first thing we advise you to do is verify that your extensions have earned Zoe V3 conformance. The conformance program will open for Zoe extenders uh, probably sometime in February. We'll, we'll post that information at zoe.org next. Um, you can also contact your vendor directly and ask if they have tested and can verify that their current extension is interoperable with uh, Zoe V3. 
and as a final reminder, um, all support providers, the Zoe Conformance support providers will uh, need to reaffirm and reapply for comprehensive um, support, any, any kind of support actually. Um, and the support will cover all Zoe core components introduced with V3. Okay. Thank you very much, Rose. And with this, let's uh, move into the API mediation layer. As was already mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat. I have it open, so if it's possible, I will uh, answer them right away. Uh, worst case, we will get to them in the end. Uh, so first, we will uh, remind you for about the upgrade. Uh, this is relevant for API mediation layer as well. So if you are still on version 1, please make sure that during this year you upgrade to at least version 2. It's okay to stay on version 2 if there is nothing in version 3 that you are looking for specifically. There is no problem with this and V2 will be supported for next two and a half year approximately. It's just that no new development will happen. So if you are looking at the new functionality, the new functionality will be coming only to version 3. As for the V1, there is going to be only unless there is some security vulnerability found, there is going to be only one final maintenance release and that's going to be 128.6 and it's gonna happen plus minus few days on September 30. And let's go into more overview for the uh, API mediation layer itself. So first, and I will be reminding everyone all the time, the fact that V3 is coming basically means that V2 is complete. Don't expect too much new functionality with V3 right away. It will be gradually getting there. We will be working on it and all the new functionality and all the improvements will gradually get into V3, but they won't be there from 3.0. Uh, there are three key things uh, that are related to V3 and API mediation there. First of them are that there are going to be new prerequisites. The main one is Java 17, which basically drives the remaining ones. So for API mediation layer, that's going to be part of Zoe V3 release stream. You will need to run it on Java 17. This requires, as of current knowledge, to have ZOS 2.5. And with this goes ZOSMF in the version at least V2 R5. So these are the new prerequisites that you will have need to have on your system installed in order to actually run. Zoe in version 3, specifically for API mediation layer. And then uh, there are some amount of APIs and services that uh, accrued within the Zoe and API mediation layer within the last few years. Uh, the four services that I'm outlining here didn't really get much use uh, and or were not used at all. So IMS API was used very little and uh, is not actually workable right now. So we are going to finally acknowledge this fact and archive it. Uh, jobs and datasets APIs are going to be archived because the functionality was more or less fully superseded by what ZOSMS offers. And it's just taking uh, some amount of cycles from our time to upgrade and fix security vulnerabilities in the or potential security vulnerabilities in the dependencies and metrics service uh, that was an idea about being able to monitor what's going on with the API mediation layer. Uh, we will replace this with a more fully fledged and mature solution during the V3 that will be focusing on the open telemetry. But as itself, as a self steering service that was depending on the Zool, Ribbon, and other solutions that are going to be removed, the service itself is going to be archived. This should free some of our capacity to work on the improvement of the API mediation layer instead of just maintaining solutions that nobody care about. Uh, there is one change that's linked to the API mediation layer with respect to installation and configuration. And it's about statically onboarded services. I hope that most of or all of you knows that there are multiple ways how to onboard services to the API mediation layer. So we are talking about extending services. One of these is static onboarding. This means that there is some file that explains what the service is about. And uh, this 
file needs to be somewhere where Zoe can read it. In version two and version one, it was possible to just use one of the Zoe directories to onboard it. Uh, from v3, we push on using only uh, the additional directories that are not part of Zoe workspace to limit risks and conflicts. And the Zoe.yaml contains uh, components of discover.alternative static API definition di directories uh, property. And in this property, you can specify any or and even more than one directories where your, your system specific static directories, uh, static definitions will live. So this is the only thing that's expected around the installation and configuration. Uh, I, yeah, for configuration itself, it was possible to use some custom configuration that was coming from Zool and Histrix within the API gateway. So for those of you that are unaware, API mediation layer consists of API gateway, discovery service, and uh, API catalog. These are, and the caching service, these are the four key services. Uh, here I'm talking about API gateway. API gateway in version three, version one and two was built on top of Netflix's dual uh, ribbon Hitrix components. Uh, and in version three, we are moving towards Spring Cloud Gateway baseline because the Zool is not really supported anymore. And we want to make sure we are in a better place to support uh, the solution going forward. The, this means that there is some amount of configuration that's not going to be valid anymore. I would say that most of it was never used, but technically speaking, it was possible to use it. It wasn't really well documented how to do that. But anyway, if you are using any of this zoo related configuration, you would have to actually change the shell scripts to do so. So unless you know that you are doing it, you are not doing it. Uh, you, you should be fine. But if you are, it's necessary to figure out what to do about it and reach out to us. Some of these things are just ir irrelevant anymore. The same goes for the Hystrix. So this is just a different set of configuration that wasn't really exposed by us per se, but it's going to be removed and it was noted in the docs. So it's important to let everybody know that, hey, it's not going to be here anymore. Uh, so as for the Zoe v3 user experience related to API mediation layer, I don't see much change at least not starting with the 3.0. The only thing that's changing, but it's changing gradually over the last half year, and we will continue on it, is uh, implement is changes in the documentation. The large area that we are working now on is building properly the user or the use section for the API mediation layer that should cover properly how do you as a user use the all the functionalities so single sign-on multi-factor authentication how does the routing works and what do you need to know as a user what do you need to know about the api catalog how do you can learn more about the apis that are living within your infrastructure how do you administer things around the api mediation layer and so on so this is i would say a large scale effort that's being worked on. And I, I believe that this one is going to exist at around version 3.0. So it should be there to help you understand how, how, what APIs are available and how do you effectively use them to achieve some of these things that I just mentioned. Uh, one thing that's uh, kind of a remainder from version one is that uh, because it was missed when transitioning from version one to version two, we kept support for slash API slash v1 slash gateway for the authentication APIs. So login, query, validate. And with version three, we really want to move away and support only slash gateway slash API slash v1 slash out slash login. So if you are still using the v1 style of these, it's, it's four endpoints of these four endpoints it's time to migrate and start using the new new one. The new ones will work with V2 still, so 
you are not gonna uh, lose any functionality with v2 it just will stop working with v1 that's gonna and support in nine months and let's go a bit more in the detail about the archive loss there is not much in the term of a new feature expected by 3.0 itself we will have the spring cloud gateway but it's more of a technical decision and technical feature it's probable that it will deliver the possibility to limit the rate to the a of the request to the apis but this is still more focused on the extenders where i mentioned it actually but as for the archivals archivals the first is ims api technically speaking there exists ims operations api uh it's kind of living in the Zoe repository, but it was not ever really owned by anyone. So the API mediation error squad was never responsible for it. But uh, the reality was that no one was. And so it just stopped working at some point and uh, we are just announcing that, hey, please don't use it. If for some reason you are the only person that's actually tried to use it and is using it, reach out to us and we will figure out how to help you transition. Uh, there are two more services that were part of the API mediation layer. It's been, or it, that were all uh, under the guidance of the API mediation layer squad. And that's JESS API. It was originally built by primarily IBM. Uh, it provided functionality, uh, mainly like more filtering and stuff like this around the jobs. But gradually, it got superseded by ZOSMF functionality, and we within Zoe don't use it ourselves. By default, this API was already uh, deprecated and disab enabled or disabled by default in version two, and with version three, therefore, we would like to archive it because it takes us some time to still update all the versions of the dependencies, and uh, the usage is very limited. Same goes for the datasets APIs. It's a very similar similar situation. So originally it provided us with a bit more functionality than what ZOSMF at that time provided. But as of now, ZOSMF does provide all the functionality that was there at least somehow. And so uh, we are just removing this altogether. It's been also deprecated and disabled uh, in the version two already. So this is just a cleanup. And the last one to be removed is the metric service. Uh, we can see here the dashboard that was showing uh, the actual requests going through the API mediation layer towards different services and towards the specific uh, endpoints with the amount of requests, the information about how long it took and so on. This information itself for metric services gonna get lost altogether, but we intend to implement within the version 3.0, the full support for open telemetry within the API mediation layer, which should give you like the more detailed tracing information about all the requests going through the API mediation layer to all the services and even uh, make sure that the gateway is a good place to start your scopes within the open telemetry as the probably the first place that uh, any request towards the mainframe will go through, at least from the infrastructure point of view. And uh, that's all with respect to what we expect from the user's point of view for the API mediation layer. As you see, the answer would be, well, we don't expect to change much for you, if anything unless you are one of the few using the deprecated APIs and then please reach out to us and we will help you guide you how to get away from them. As was already mentioned by Rose, uh, the main resource for Zoe version 3 is the vnext page. So zoe.org slash vnext covers all information that we captured from the extender office hours, all the information about the conformance changes and also all the frequent or all the questions that we've received either in a Slack around version three or here within one of the office hours. If you want to contact us with respect to E3, it's uh, very similar to any other way how to contact us. Generally, 
the effective way to go through for the community information is the API ML channel in Slack. If you have any problem, any issue, or any enhancement request, please go to API Mediation Layer repository. It's API Layer and create an issue there. We are regularly triaging them, regularly looking into it and trying to figure out what we can do about the topics. And uh, an alternative, if neither of these is to your taste, is to reach out directly to me on jakub.balhead.com and I, I will help you either by directly answering something or pushing you in the right direction in the right resources or getting the right people. And I have a few questions. So let's start with the first one. API ML v3 won't support clients with onboarding enabler v2. The answer actually is it will support clients with onboarding enabler v2. As of now, we don't see any changes that would be breaking from this point of view. So onboarding enablers that will be published as part of v3 release will be working with uh, Zoe version 2, the API mediation there version 2, as well as the extensions that are built on top of Zoe version 2 will still continue working with the Zoe slash API ML version 3. So this is the first. Uh, and therefore, for our uh, answer to question two, which is for us as for extenders jump to Java 17 means that we have to maintain two separate versions of our application, one with API enabler v2 and another one with v3. Uh, the answer is, if you are okay with the API enabler v2, so basically, if you are using the plain Java enabler in version two, then feel free to keep it for the rest of the, at least for next year or year and a half or two years. If uh, you are using Spring, Spring Boot, uh, then the Java 17 requirement is actually coming from Spring. So the fact that we are moving to Spring Boot 3 and Spring 6 and Spring uh, Security 6 which is basically necessary from the security vulnerability standpoint, at some point you should also move with, move with us. But if you are not using anything within the Spring ecosystem, feel free to stay with the plain Java enabler, and then you can keep the version 2 working and build against Java 8, 11, 17. So this is, this is the recommendation or workaround how to support both. I'm not sure if it answered, okay. Great, glad to hear, thanks. Okay, uh, as for the, can you speak about the migration from Zoo to Spring Cloud Gateway? Today, there are two separate gateway services and in API ML with separate config. Uh, the goal is to have just one, it's gonna be just Spring Cloud Gateway. I think Aaron, that to some extent, you are also talking about what do we do in a multi-tenant environment where right now there is a Spring Cloud Gateway as the first and then uh, NetZool-based gateways on the specific uh, Sysplexes? So the answer is that there will be just the Cloud Gateway. There will be one upfront and then Cloud Gateway on each of the Sysplexes. And the configuration for the Spring Cloud Gateway should move to the Gateway uh, uh, namespace. So within the zoe.yaml, it's going to be components.gateway and dot whatever is needed to configure. Uh, did it answer what, what you were looking for? F feel free to unmute and, and directly speak if, if you want. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, but that, that did help. Um, so I'm, I'm just thinking that I think today there's separate uh, or there's different items in the configuration. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm just wondering about like someone who's got the um, the legacy gateway deployed. I mean, is there going to be any sort of migration help or are they just going to have to? Uh, so I think there will be, but I think that all of the properties that are like uh, living now if in actually components.gateway.space or mm -hmm. components cloud gateway, those dot under components gateway should remain as far as I'm aware, at, at, okay. as of current moment. So it's more that there will be more edit that will be coming from the Cloud Gateway space. Okay, and and I, I think I missed earlier when you were saying in V3 is the is the old Zool uh, base gateway gone or are people going to have yeah. some time to migrate? Uh, well, with V3, it, it, it's gone. Okay. So once you are moving to V3, you are moving to Spring Cloud Gateway, but we okay. are doing our 
best to make sure that it's not a even a breaking change. So from a point of view of a user of the mediation layer, nothing should change. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And uh, take it with a grain of salt. I may still find in the next two months that there are <laughs> sure. some minor changes and some minor configuration things. And then it's possible that we will provide a config utility that will allow simplify the transition if there is any. But okay, the goal awesome. is for no transition. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Jean, can you talk us through how a client site and user will find and obtain the correct APML service instance ID for the desired instance of this service? So I think that you are uh, talking about the situation where there is one service with multiple instances, where the multiple instances are either living in a different uh, LPRs, let's say, or are in a different uh, like type of environment, so broad, dev, QA. Yes, I, I, exactly. OK, so first, we have a, an issue where we are working on how to make sure that this is intuitive and clean. So I can talk about how it is now. I don't have yet answer to how it will look like later on once we figure out fully. Because right now we talked properly, I would say, about the situation with like multiple LPARs. And with multiple LPARs, it's possible to use the header X instance ID that uh, will get you to a specific instance. And uh, you can get information about all the instances of a specific service from the discovery service. There is an API that will provide you with this information. So this is the combination of how you would do it. You will get information about all the service instances. Then you will select the one that you want to interact with. And then the client will use the X instance ID header to make sure that the request always go to a specific instance. The problem is that this is really more focused about the helpers, and it doesn't really take into account the different types of environments. And for this, I don't have an answer. And we just know that it's a problem that we need to solve. Okay. But even today, when you when the API retrieves the various instances, is there a relationship or a mapping to, and it belongs to this LPAR, so someone can make a logical connection and pick the right instance? I don't think that uh, APIML itself does it. Usually, the people tends to have the information in the URL, and so it's possible to get it from the URL, but I, we, we don't have any specific metadata for this. Okay. Thank you. And there is an issue. I, it, it would be great if once we start working on it, you will be willing to help us in figuring out how it needs to look like so that it actually satisfies the needs of the clients. Uh, the, the reason I asked the question in the first place is we're starting to investigate that whole process and how does how does an end user have all everything he needs to make the right decision? And we're still sorting through that too. So thank you. Uh, I can share with you an issue where we were trying to outline what it what the problem looks like and how where we are right now. Okay. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Regarding static onboarding, we are using a template that Zoe upon startup would find through manifest and read for variables and put into the API dev directory, no manual use and action required. Will this still be available? So first of all, like we are not removing the possibility to actually use the API definitions directory. We will be using it ourselves because we will keep the ZOSMF there at the very least and at the very least for the V3. Uh, as what would be a proper way is that you would do exactly the same that you did, just put it in a different directory and then uh, edit the information about the directory to the zoe.yaml. It could be automated as well. Madeline, did this answer the question for you? Not really, because I mean, it's in our user directory. We don't put anything like we as users wouldn't do it put wouldn't put anything into the workspace directory we 
put it into our apps directory. So it's basically I... Zoe, Zoe only using that API devs directory. <clears throat> so so if it so we are not changing any functionality as of now. So if it Good. worked, it would work. All right. Thank you. It's more that we are now starting to signalize that there is a way that we consider like the correct way, and we are trying to gradually persuade people that throughout the V3 to moving in this direction. So the correct way from version one changed to version two, and then now from version two to version three is changing again. But it, um... I think that we might need to take this uh, offline to figure out the exact details because I actually think that it didn't change. Okay. Right we now. Do that. So it's maybe just some confusion on my side on what I'm answering. Okay. Like, I think that in version one, it was expected that we would edit, that we were adding it to workspace, which is kind of my. Remembrance. Okay, let, let, let's uh, discuss this uh, offline, and uh, I will pose the answer then as part of the questions for this topic. Any other question? Okay, I, I don't see any further question right now. So uh, this seems like back to you, Rose. It seems to be all from my side. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jakob. Thanks, everyone, for the questions and the interaction. I have noted them, Jakob, so we can uh, we can get them posted. Uh, just one more point I want to make. If you're interested in having us remind you about these types of office hours or uh, webinars that we deliver from the Zoe community, please consider joining our mailing list. If you have not already joined our mailing list, the link to join is here, but there's an easier way to do it. Just go to zoe.org and we have a link right on the landing page there where you can uh, just click on it and fill out the, the information that the Open Mainframe Project is asking for. Just a way for us to reach out to you rather than you having to come in and check on us to see what's happening. And I think with that, I think that ends this session. Uh, next week, we will be focusing on uh, CLI and the Node SDK. And the following week, we'll be focusing on uh, the Zoe Explorer for Visual Studio Code. So just keep us marked in your calendar at 8 a.m. on Fridays, bright and early. Uh, and um, thank you for joining today. Have a Thanks, great Thanks, everyone. Week. Thanks for the questions. It was a great session to be able to answer all of them. And thanks, Jakob, for presenting.